Welcome back to the community, everyone. Thanks for being here. Today, we are going to go ahead and start working on the floors. After that, next week, I'm going to start working on the inner wells and getting those done. But I just want to get the floors out of the way. So I will be speeding certain parts of the film up. Like when I'm wire wheeling, I'll speed that up real quick. When I'm using bare metal primer, I'll speed that up. I'll be speeding a lot of parts up so that you don't get you know, frustrated and start fast forwarding the film ahead. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is there was numerous people that said they want to see everything I'm doing. And even in a few emails when I said, well, the boring parts I cut out, everybody wants to follow this whole project. So I'm more than happy to do that. So I will be speeding a lot of parts of the film up and we'll go ahead and keep on it. Check out the website when you get time. Lots to see and do there. All right, let's get on it today. All right, so this is what we're dealing with. Obviously, the tar board's left in the front, so we're going to get that removed, and then we're going to wire wheel, clean all this up, and we're going to hit it with bare metal primer. Uh, that stuff don't take that long to dry, and then we're going to go ahead and basically paint it just black. The rust bullet that I got that I discussed in an earlier video, we're going to go ahead and actually put that underneath the car because inside I'm really not going to have much problems with uh, being exposed to the elements. And we'll go ahead and continue, of course, in here. Because I got a couple holes to fix, which is not a big deal. And we'll go ahead, next week's video, we'll be doing the uh, sound deadener. And with the sound deadener, I like to use a heat gun or a hair dryer and shape it and mold it. I just have a way that I do it, and I... I like installing it, and I like molding it to the shape of the floor. So I'll show how that's done. All right, let's start getting the tar board removed. So what we got going on here is we're going to get the tar board up. Then I'm going to remove this brake line. Uh, I'm putting all new brake lines in. So, you know, you may want to be gentle with yours. I'm going to snip mine out of the way because there's no point in being delicate with it, with, you know, putting all new brake lines in. So let's first try to get the tar board up and see what we're dealing with here. Okay, this one I knew was going to come right up because it was just laying there. If in fact you have a problem getting these up, I don't know if I'm going to run into that yet. A lot of times you can buy dry ice if you have access to that near you and coat it with dry ice and it literally freezes it and then starts pulling off well okay well i didn't expect that <laughs> okay well, we'll be going ahead and doing the other side i didn't expect that guys i really didn't i never messed with it yet okay i got lucky on that the the tar board's already off the back part, for except under the back seat area we'll get. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the brake line when we come back to this side, then wire wheel and clean up. So let's go to the other side and see what the tar board looks like. I don't think that most of you are going to get lucky like that. But hopefully you do. Let's switch to the other side. Sorry about that. Okay, we're on the passenger side now. I don't think I'll get that lucky again, but let's go ahead and see yeah this one's well i don't know it's slowly coming up i seen uh that one came off i seen somebody use dry ice i think it was my buddy tonus and uh it's a little cumbersome a little bit of aggravation but it did work you know so if you have trouble and i still may i'm not done yet here then you'll want to get dry ice on it. So, okay, that came right up. Oh boy, this one looks like it ain't split up like the other side was. I'm just using a, a flat blade. I really know what this is called. probably can't see this as well back there or maybe you can from this angle I got two cameras running okay this one's gonna stick a little bit more
Okay, we got some out of the way. Yeah, this is definitely original. It's been on there a while. I'll speed some of this up here on the film. You know, I'm surprised because a lot of people, you know, like me, I'll be doing sound deadener. I don't know if the tar board that they sell now is any good like the old German stuff, but I will say one thing, unless I got a surprise here waiting on me, these floors stayed really nice from the original tar board. I didn't expect them to look this way. So the original tar board does work good. So by all means, if you do want to stay with original tar board, they sell it at Wolfsburg West, a couple places, you know, that sell quality items. Uh, you might want to go with that. I'm using a different type of sound deadener because I've had a lot of luck with it. And I know Chris Valone also uses it on his restorations. And those are mostly 50s beetles worth a good bit of money. So, okay, let me finish doing this. I'll speed the film up again with this. Okay, so that came up fairly easy. I'm kind of shocked because usually it can cause a lot of grief running into using dry ice and all kind of stuff. So that really worked out well. I'll have a little mess to clean up on the floor later. So that wasn't so bad. I'm really surprised actually that these floors are in the condition they are. Hopefully when I wire a wheel, nothing weird starts to go on, you know, but truthfully, not so bad. I'm really surprised. Once I wire will, it'll, uh, it'll take a lot of that off. One thing I can say too is, let me get this first right in my mouth. <laughs> Look at that firewall, how nice and clean that is. This car, besides a little bit of rot in the back, it is in really nice condition. It honestly is. Okay, let me grab a vacuum, and I'll vacuum this side out first real quick, and then we'll work our way back. Give me a second. Alrighty. Let me vacuum this up real quick here. Get this cleaned up. How about that? Now remember, when you're getting this stuff off of here, the old tar, make sure you get the most off possible. Because what's going to happen is you're going to start to wire wheel, have a lot of the tar substance on there still, and you're just going to end up clogging up the wire wheel or just burning it down fast. So scrape off what you can, okay? I'm going to, I guess, go to that side next and clean that all up, remove the brake line, and then move to the back section. So let me move the cameras around. Now we're back to the driver's side. I'm jumping all over the place here. I'm going to get this brake line removed out of here because like I said, I am installing new brake lines. So you're going to watch me just cut and rip it out, but I'm going to show you what to be careful with also. And I'm putting a new one in. Don't do that. If you're trying to save your brake line, obviously, don't act like a gorilla and start ripping everything apart. So, okay, I'm going to snip it out the front. I don't know if I was in your way or not there. Okay. And there are clips holding these in. Okay. So here's a picture of what the clips look like.
you don't want to break them if you can help it. You want to keep them decent so you can clip your new brake line in. Okay, and back here. Just bending these up very gently. Remember, they've been on there forever, so they're probably not in the best of shape. But just kind of bend them up like that very gently, and then you'll be able to pull your brake line out. Okay, got one at the back here. Remember, don't don't go crazy. We're gonna pull that out, and I'm gonna cut this. I'll get in your way for a minute. Okay, and there's our main brake line out of the way. Let's check up in here, see what we got going on, and when I'm done. Completely, that is, and I can get my vacuum inside of here and pull that out. Although somebody cut that open, I wish they wouldn't have, but they did. It seems that a few people I know, when I showed this was cut open here, said they see that quite a bit. People that don't understand beetles when they get them and they have to mess with the clutch cable, they cut a hole in the tunnel. So now I get to weld that closed. That's not what you do, obviously. Okay, I'm probably, once I'm finished, so to speak, with this area, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, new seam sealer along there once I get it really cleaned up. So. All right, let's get the vacuum and clean this part up. Okay, so this is all cleaned up. Floor feels fine. We'll know when we run that wire wheel across it very shortly here. So let's go ahead now, rotate the cameras around and we're gonna point to the back and get that cleaned up because once I wire wheel it, which I'm gonna speed you through that film quickly, what will take me probably a half hour, you're gonna see in about 60 seconds. Okay, so we're at the back section here. And, okay, that's all done there. This here, I just gotta vacuum up. I don't see anything major. Okay, that cleaned up nicely. Not a problem. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this on here for right now and I'll get what I can get to to show you what's going on. But I think what I'm gonna do is before I go ahead next week and do the uh, sound deadener is I'm gonna remove these. And I don't feel like removing them today. I want to be able to get up in there and around the heater channel. So I'll remove those next week when I'm doing the sound deadener and do a quick touch up with the paint. So let's go ahead and move to the other side. Get that cleaned up. Then we're going to wire wheel and speed the film up real fast. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, clean this side up and let the wire wheeling begin. Give me a second here. Okay. Let's take this off. It's a 13 millimeter. Basically the same on all of them, I believe. That's your battery hold down. And this way it gives you a chance to wire wheel all this stuff up and paint it nice and black so nobody will see it. But you'll know it looks good. Okay. Let's get our battery cable off. There's some washer. Oh, no, there's your washers. They're wavy washers. 
believe it or not, this don't look as bad as you think. I'll test it, but honestly, I'll clean it up real nice. It's not frayed or broken. Not afraid. Frayed. Okay. So don't lose your nuts or bolts. Make sure you mark them, put them in bags. All right. And here is the wire wheel, the big kahuna. This won't take long for you guys because I am going to go ahead and speed up the film. And that way you don't have to be aggravated watching me. So we'll speed it up as soon as I get this plugged in and start rocking and rolling. Hang tight. Okay, so we got our wire wheel ready. We're going to skim all along here. And I kept this on hand just in case. Wear these. Do yourself a favor. Wear these to keep your hearing protected with all this noise. I'm going to play some music in the background while I'm wire wheeling, but I'll speed it up real fast and wear a dust mask. Okay, let me get my gear on here. Okay, so you got the idea of what I'm doing here, all right? What I'm going to do now is finish wire wheeling both sides. I'll splice the film, and in about three seconds, you're going to watch me start to bare metal primer it. Okay, so let me go ahead and get this finished. Hang tight a second. I did finish wire wheeling the floors down. Okay, and we're going to bare metal primer them. So I'll show you the other side now. And they actually came out quite nice. Now I'm not as worried about the heater channels right now. If you think, what is he doing? Because I'm not going to be sound deadening the heater channel itself. So that's not a big deal. But those are done. And one thing, of course, I always want to show you something. Do you see that? That is your pedal stop. That's what keeps the pedals from falling forward, okay? A lot of people will say their pedals are falling forward, you know, this way, and they don't know why, and that's because of the pedal stop. Sometimes some areas rot out or what have you. So, okay, let's start some bare metal primer, and I will go ahead and speed up some of the film on that. So hang tight. Also, here's what I'm using. Rust-Oleum, well, it's white, don't matter because it's going to be covered up. Clean metal primer, okay, use on bare, painted, lightly rusted metal, the ultimate finish. Ooh. Cool, huh? As you can see, I already used some before, and I'm sloppy. So that's what we're going to use. Let me grab a brush and get ready. Okay, and also, if you look at this and go... Why the junky, oh, made in China, there you go. Why the junky paintbrush? Yep, it's from China. And the reason is, to be honest with you, these oil-based Rust-Oleums, when I'm painting them on stuff, I throw these out. They're a dollar at Walmart, so. That's what I do. So let's go ahead. And I'm not gonna bore you with the whole deal bit. I'll go ahead, talk for a few minutes about something, and then I'll speed the film up. So basically, if you feel the need to put two coats of this on, you're fine. You're not going to hurt anything. Remember, you're trying to seal and protect. Now, I did get uh, what you're going to see in a couple of weeks, and as I get time, is I got all that rust bullet I'm going to use underneath the car. But we're going to go ahead and try to get uh, the car up as high as we can in the air. My jack stands only go so high. So we're going to do that. And the reason I didn't use the rust bullet on the inside is I feel it would have been wasteful. In all honesty, I'm doing the bare metal primer. Then I'm going to do, you know, the black uh, rust-oleum 
over top of that. And once I do that, and the sound deadener is over it, it's all going to be sealed anyhow. So I just think it would have been a waste of money to do the rust bullet on the inside. But tell me what you think. I mean, we're all different. I'm not a professional. I don't know everything. So I'm going to do this on the inside, but I'm going to do an extensive two-part film on doing the rust oleum, or I'm sorry, mistake, the rust bullet on the outside, the underneath and the inner well. So, okay, I'm going to speed this part of the film up. Let's go ahead and get this bare metal primer down. Now, as you see, and so I'll know how to use a paintbrush, okay? I'm not going to bore you with even speeding up more of it. I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and hit the rest of the floors and then show you the outcome. So I got a coat of the bare metal primer down. What a difference, huh? Isn't that amazing? Of course, you can see the before and after pictures right here. but it makes a big, big difference. Now that's only one coat. It's gonna take at least three, four hours to dry and then I'm gonna hit it with another coat because I'm weird like that. And uh, here, we'll go to the other side. There we go. Nice and neat. Uh, I know a lot of people go, well, you got, you got a little paint on the tunnel there. Really? Anyhow, uh, once this dries tomorrow, I'm gonna hit it with uh, some black paint uh, the oil-based Rust-Oleum, then I'll be putting the sound deadener down. Uh, I will go ahead and film doing the black paint in the next film and then edit it right into doing the sound deadener so you guys don't have to get bored with stuff like this. But I promised I would take you along with me on the ride. So that's it for this week. Let me go over a couple things real fast. Okay, so thankfully my floor pans are very nice as you see. I found one little tiny hole on the lip on the side and that'll be on the outside. I'll go ahead and wire wheel, clean it up, blah, blah. And I'll weld a little metal patch there, which is not a problem. Uh, I know some of you think, why didn't you sandblast and epoxy primer and all that? Look guys, this is gonna be a daily driver, okay? And yes, I'm making it soundproof and I'm also going to go ahead and make it rust proof the best that I can. Uh, but when it comes down to it, the soundproofing, sound deadener, whatever you want to call it's going over it, then the carpet. So technically speaking, you know, if there's a couple brush marks or something, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave that bare metal primer dry for 24 hours. Then I'll hit it with the black. I'll make sure I at least do a quick video on that. And I'll merge that video into the sound deadener. I use a special roller on my sound deadener when I put it down and I'll show you next week. And also I use a hair dryer. Watch using a heat gun if you're not used to them because you can melt that stuff. So I'll probably use a hair dryer for the video so nobody else does nothing strange. And I'll go ahead and show you how I make it flow and it molds to the floor pan. So we'll go ahead and do that next week and we'll just keep moving forward and it'll get more exciting as time goes on. Thanks so much for being here. Please share the channel and thanks for hanging out today.